everyone, welcome back, Professor Hank here. So today we're gonna to talk about the string buffer class in Java. And what this thing allows us to do is to create strings that are mutable. So with the string buffer class, we can create a string and then change it, modify it, update it. And so we'll look at how we can declare a string buffer. We'll also look at a few of the methods that uh, you can use when working with a class string buffer. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the way we can create one of these things. So we want to have um, the keyword string buffer Then we need to have a name. So we'll just call this um, stra. And then we're gonna use that new keyword. And then we're gonna do string buffer. And then inside these parentheses here, we're gonna put some string that we want. So we'll do something like um, hello and That'll, that'll be it, okay? So once we've got that, then we can print out the contents of that string buffer object. We can print out the string by using, you know, your standard system.out.println, and we'll pass string as the argument to the print line function here, and then we'll run that, and you'll see that we can see the hello in the output. Okay, so there it is. Now, what we can do is we can use methods that come with the string buffer class to modify the hello in different ways. So easy one to see would be something like string.reverse. And so what that does is that just takes the string that this string buffer object is managing and then just reverses the order of the characters. And so you'll see that it's like ol. <laughs> So there it is reversed. So we've actually updated the object. So this is different for the string. This is different than what you have with the string class. Because remember the string class itself, when you create just a regular old string, right? So string um, M equals hello, for example, right? This thing is immutable. So you can't do that. You can't change it. Okay. So string reverse. Let's see what it looks like to do an append. So we could do something like stra dot append. And then inside these parentheses here, we're going to do um, comma space world, right? And then we'll print that out. And then you'll see that, you know, the string has been updated hello world so we've modified the original string here and so it's a bit it's a bit easier to do a pending here right i mean there's less overhead involved than working with strings doing it with a with a, an actual string object all right so let's look at a couple other methods here that we can use so we will do the insert method and that will allow us to insert a substring within the method itself so let's say that I leave this append operation in and I want to do hello fantastic world or something like that. Maybe I want to put fantastic in the middle here. So what I'll do is I'll do stree.insert and then I'll specify two things. I'll specify what I want to insert and where. So we'll try to put it after the O here. So the first index is zero, then the second is one, two, three, four. So I think we want to do five if I'm counting right, and we'll check. And then I'm going to do fantastic. And then that will update our string by changing the hello world into hello fantastic world. So let's take a look at that and see how that works. Okay, so you can see there's the hello fantastic world. Now, if I wanted to space after that, Oh, there. Well, then I'll just put a little space right there, right? And then so that way we'll have, you know, an actual something that looks more like a sentence, right? So hello, fantastic world. Okay. Now let's say that I decide that I don't like the hello. Let's say that I want to do bye, right? So what I can do then is I can use the replace method. So I can do something like this. I can do stree.replace. And then I'm gonna specify where I wanna start, where I wanna end, and then the string that I want to replace it with. So I'm gonna start at the very beginning because I wanna change it to goodbye, right? So I'm gonna go zero, and then I'm gonna go up to, this is index zero, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go up to, but not including five, okay? And then I'm going to do goodbye, right? Goodbye. And so then we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so now you can see there's the goodbye fantastic world. So we're modifying the string. It is mutable. So we've got replace there. Um, we can do a delete. So we can delete a substring. So let's say I want to get rid of the fantastic out of that. So then I might do something like this. I might say stree dot delete. And then we're going to do the start point and then the end point. Now let's think about where that's going to be if I want to get rid of the fantastic. Goodbye. After we do our replace, then goodbye is at the beginning, right? So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I want to start at eight and I want to go through 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I want to go up to, but not including, 17, right? So that should delete the fantastic out of our string. I might be off by one, but if so, we'll fix it. But no, oh, there we go. Goodbye, you know, goodbye world. Now, if I don't want that space in there anymore, then maybe I'll, you know, delete, start one position closer and um, we'll get rid of that space. So let's see. Yeah, so there we go. So now we, so now we fixed it. Okay, so... Those are all of the methods that I want to cover with you. There's others as well, but I wanted to give you a feel for how this works. And it's not really that complicated. I mean, the, the big thing to remember is that the string buffer class is going to be used if you want to have the option to modify your strings um, after you create them, whereas, you know, string objects are what you use if... You know, if you don't have any plans to change them at all. Now, one other thing I'll point out here too is that, you know, one last little quick example is that you can use um, other strings, right? So, or string variables. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll create a new string buffer object up here and I'll do first equals new uh, string buffer and I'll put in here my name, but I will do it by passing a string argument. So I might have something like this, right? I might have like uh, first name equals Hank, right? So then I can pass as an argument to this constructor first name, and then I could do my append from there, right? I could create my maybe my last name here, do last name equals Stalika. And then when I do my append, I could do first dot append and then put inside of here last name, right? So you can pass string literals or string variables as arguments into these methods, right? So um, let's go ahead and print out first and see the results of our work. Okay, so there you can see my name. And then if I wanted to put a space in between, you know, then I can do that, that insert uh, method. Okay, so now you know some of the basics of how to use a string buffer object and why you might want to use it instead of a regular old string object. As usual, if you are a student of mine and you have any questions about any of the content in this video or any of the other videos for our classes, please feel free to email me via Canvas or stop by my Zoom office hours. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.